2, Deuteronomy chapter 1, and it's verse 1 through 8. Are you there? Say yes. Now, before we do, let's do our confessions. We've got our prayer confessions, okay? And, I, and we're going to keep doing them, and I just told them we keep doing them because there's something when we pray in unity, amen? So let's pray together. Let's prayer confession number one. I pray against anything that wants to cripple my life, the life of my churches, finances, marriage, health, children, and purpose. Confession number two. I pray against all forms of provocations and setups. They are brought to naught. Confession number three. I overturn all demonic invocations from the regions of the sea, the second heaven, the forest kingdom, the animal kingdom, the water kingdom, and the underworld kingdom. Number four. I issue a divine arrest of all demonic spiritual reactions and conspiracies against me, my church, my family, and the leadership of my church. Number five, I ask God to avenge me, my family, and the leadership of my church. Number six, you'll probably have to say this twice. Ready? I declare that what was written in the volume of the books, my prophetic destiny and purpose will come into full manifestation without delay or interruption. Interference. I think you need to say that one again. I declare that what was written in the volume of the books, my prophetic destiny and purpose, will come into full manifestation without delay or interference. And number seven, I declare divine timing, strategic relationships, open doors, favor in high places, and the goodness of God to continually manifest in my life. If you believe that, I know you've got your Bible, but put your hands together and say yes and now let's get ready for the word now they tell me my eyelashes falling off so if I preach my eyelashes off that's that's the least you've seen I'm home because I've preached myself um, evangelist and miss Latoya I've preached myself out of hose here remember when my hose fell down and I just grabbed it around my ankle and threw it to somebody <laughs> I preached my slip off one time. My slip was off there, so we preached out of shoes. I broke a heel one time. So if it's only an eyelash falling off, we still good as long as everything else is staying in shape. Amen. That means that you just going you, you preach the house down somebody, but we're gonna preach some devils out of your life too. So we might preach an eyelash off, but we're gonna preach a devil out of your life. We only got half an amen right there. Pastor Michael, it seems like they like some devils hanging around, but I've decided this is the year of freedom. This is the year of liberty. This is the year that you return to ruling. This is the year that everything comes under your feet. This is the year you tread down some things. This is the year you don't get treated or talked to like a dog anymore. This is the year that Pharaoh doesn't harass you. This is the year that poverty is beneath you, that you're the head and not the tail. This is the year you take possession. This is your year that you are severed from anything of your past. Any contracts, come on, any covenants that have been made, that were unconscious or conscious that were out of the alignment of the will of God it's broken the residue comes off of you this is the year that you are free from bankruptcies and foreclosures and bad credit this is the year you're free from from those relationships that keep trying to pursue you come on that have nothing to do with that divorce that you went through it's over come on you're gonna be set free paying 52 percent of your paycheck and living like it no I don't think so this is the year that you were severed from all of that nonsense IRS debts gonna be canceled over somebody lawsuits are gonna be settled depression is gonna leave your life disease has to leave your body discouragement has to go bad memories are gonna be erased God's about to hit a control alt delete button there's gonna be a supernatural erasing of some things in the spirit you better slap somebody upside their head say pastors back in the house and talking to you right now say this is my year this is my year Deuteronomy chapter 1 are you there three people are there are you there all right Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 through 8 let me hear you says these be the words which Moses spake unto all of Israel on this side of the Jordan in the wilderness in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazroth and Dizapah 
There are 11 days journey from Oreb. Now, this is very important. By the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. So how many days journey, guys? All right. Now, we know because we already know through history that what should have been an 11-day journey took them 40 years, right? And a whole generation died off in the wilderness. Now, the interesting part about this is even though it was 11 days journey from Oreb, which we're going to find out means a waste place or where things break or fall apart. Have you ever had anything fall apart in your life? It's a place of breakdown, okay? And it's a, it's a waste. It's a slow decay where things have fallen apart. And so they're in Oreb, and that's where God originally speaks to Moses. Forty years later, goes back and speaks in the same place. Now watch how they're going to do it. I would circle that word by. By the way, and it means course. So the course they're going to have to take is Mount Seir. Now that's a very interesting word. Because Mount Seir literally means stubbornness. It's goat-likeness. But it also means fear. Because anytime you're getting ready to go into a place you've never been, you have to step out on what? faith. So what's the enemy to your faith? All right. So the journey you're going to take to get to the place of possession, don't be surprised because when you step out on faith, the road that you're going to take is fear. Now you go, that sound because, and, and you go, why is it stubbornness? Why is it goat-like? Goat-like stubbornness represents your flesh. Okay. And, and then Mount Seir represents fear. Okay, because anytime you're getting ready to move into the promise of God, the things that are going to rise up, your flesh is going to stop you from moving into the place. Because when faith starts activating, flesh tries to come against it. Carnality, carnality is five senses. What you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell, what you touch. And so faith takes you to operate in a spiritual realm. It means a spiritual mind that is connected and controlled by the spirit of God. So the first thing that's going to come against you is things of your natural senses. And you've got to do some things with faith in the face of fear. Anything I've ever done has usually been with fear all around me. Because you're stepping out on nothing. It's scary to walk on water when it feels funny to your flesh. God says, get out of the boat. Well, I've never walked on water. Get out of the boat. Just keep your eyes on the master. And as long as you keep your... See, it feels funny to your flesh because you've never been this way before. So how many of you want to go to some place you've never been before? Well, I'm going to tell you the, the course to it, the way that you're going to have to plow through. You're going to have to plow through some feelings in your flesh. And you're going to have to plow through some things that would come against to kill your faith. Which means there's going to be fear. Because that's what always stops your faith. But the devil is a liar. And he says, so, so it's by that way. Now watch how he goes. He says, by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. Now that's an interesting thing because it means wandering and fugitive. They're going to die there in this wilderness, but they're going to die because they provoke God. And Hebrews says there are two types of people, those that draw nigh to God and those that draw back in the days of provocation. So when God gets ready to take you to a new place and you're in a set sovereign season, you've got one or two options. You either draw in or you draw back. And if you draw back, you literally, it's, it's what God calls the days of provocation because you'll provoke God in the place of wilderness because you're, you're, you're not binding to the promises of faith there. So you've got to make a decision, no matter what it looks like, I'm drawing in to what God has said. I'm going to take a step of faith. If it means I've got to let some things go, I'm letting them go. If it means I've got to relocate, I'm relocating. If it means I've got to walk away from a job and do this because God said, if God said it, I'm going to do it. This is my year. Somebody say, this is my year. Okay, so verse 3, and it came to pass in the 40th year in the 11th month on the first day of the month that Moses spake to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. So, God, so Moses is just speaking all that God has said, right? And after he had slain Zion, now this is interesting and I won't take time, but after he had slain Zion, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Ashtrot and Edri, because when you do start to go before they ever cross the Jordan, which is a place of new beginnings, there are some enemies of your past you've got to deal with. Now, I, I won't go into all that, but remember the Amorites? Remember Amorites, guys? Remember they were the ones that attacked you from behind and they attacked you. They attacked the feeble and they attacked the weak. And what an Amorite, that enemy represents is an enemy of your past. 
because they attack the weak and feeble from the places of behind. In other words, whatever weakened you and made you feeble from your past is where they'll attack you with. They try to make you feel guilty for something that happened 10 years ago or 10 days ago, but the devil is a liar. Thank God your past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. So it says, on this side of Jordan in the land of Moab, begin Moses to declare this law, saying, the Lord our God spake unto us in Oreb, saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mount. Look at somebody, just say, you've been there long enough. He says, turn you and take your journey, and it, which means break camp in advance in the NIV, and go to the mount of the Amorites until all the places nigh thereunto in the plain of the hills, the valley, the south, and by the seaside to the land of the Canaanites, to the Lebanon, to the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, verse 8, here's our, here's our promise for 2012. Behold, I have set the land before you. I have set the land before you. You ready? Now, without walls, are you hearing? I have set the land before you. Now, you can either miss a moment or you can seize a moment. I've set the land before you. Now, what's he saying for you to do? Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and to their seed thereafter. Now, put your Bible down. Get an attitude with somebody. Look at somebody. Just call them out by their name. Say, Pastor Michael, or whoever you're sitting next to. Say, you have dwelt there long enough. God says, break camp. God says to advance. All right, turn to somebody you haven't talked to that you've tried to ignore and just look at them in their eyes. Look at them in their eyes. Say, excuse me, but Tillian, say Tillian, say whoever it is you're sitting next to, say, say God says you have dwelt there long enough. Say that devil should be drawing social security. Say God is telling you break camp now look at one more person behind you you aren't authoritative enough say excuse me i mean shake them if you have to say excuse me but you have been in a place for long enough tonight serve an eviction notice your 2012 is going to be unlike any other year of your past now if you believe that put your hands together and give god some praise in this house Can I prophesy to you just for a little bit? Say, bring it on, Pastor, bring it on. You better be seated. Deuteronomy, we already know, means the book of repeat. Isn't it sad that God has to tell us something over and over for us to get it? It's often referred to as the book of reproof or of correction because there are things in, in our own personal walk with God that he has to course correct that he brings reproof to, that he brings correction to. But there's a hidden message within that. It means that God is the God of the second chance, the third chance, the fifth chance. Thank God that he's willing to tell me again. Come on, tell me again, Lord, that he will keep telling me because he loves me enough not to leave me the same. He loves me enough to bring reproof or correction or, or to repeat himself. And I'm grateful for the grace of God. So God says to them, and it says in verse 6, that the Lord our God spake unto us in Oreb. Now, Oreb is interesting because it means the waste place. It means to destroy gradually. It is lost by breaking down. It is a loss by decay. It is a slow destruction. And that's how the enemy does. He doesn't just usually come in and hit you and strike you. He just hits you over and over and over and over until you're just walking through the motions. You're religious, you're routine, but you've really lost the fire of God, the zeal of God. Now, let me tell you something about the enemy. He doesn't play fair. He doesn't play fair. He wants you just to settle in a place that you don't belong. But the devil is a liar. You've got to look at somebody and say, it's time to stir some things up. We're going to stir it up. It literally, to waste means to use or to expend carelessly. So God spoke to them in their place of wasteland or their place of things breaking down. And in that place, he said, you've dwelt there long enough. 
Now he's telling them don't have a repeat of performance. The word dwelt means to remain, to settle. It literally means to marry. You have, to marry is to make covenant. He said you've made covenant or you've settled in a place that you don't belong. Now let me get in your stuff for a minute because there are some things that have been lingering in your life too long. There's some attitudes, there's some habits, there's some mindsets, there's some strongholds. There's a time that you just say enough is enough. I made a decision, Corinne, that 2012, the Lord spoke to me years ago and said, you will be free in 2012. I decided that when I went into 2012, the shackles that had been on me in 2008 and 2009 and 2010 would not be on me in 2012, that it would be a different year. And I'm going to tell you because God gave me a little bit more in my monitors. God had shown me that 2012 would be a year of sovereign setup, that it is a year of government governmental perfection. 12 is a very specific number. It's a multiple of three. It's a multiple. It's a perfect number. It's a number that is sandwiched between, uh, we understand that it comes after 11 because 11 is really disorder. 11 is a number of chaos, but God's ways are not man's ways because out of chaos, God brings cosmos. So it's a number of perfection of government. So he says, you've dwelt at this mount and a mount is something that rears against you. Remember it says, speak to the mountain and the mountain shall be removed and what he's saying is speak to the thing that rears up against you so I want you to get in your mind what is it that has come against you for way too long what is it that has loomed over you because that's what it means to loom over or to rear against you so what's been looming over you what has been coming against you he says you've settled and you've remained in a place that you don't belong now now get in your spirit whatever it is that you have settled and remained in a place Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a relationship that's just been looming and it's a dead end relationship. It's not, I'm not talking about a marriage or covenant, but it's just something that it's not going anywhere. It is fatal to your faith. Maybe it's a dead end job. You know that it's not where you belong or whatever the situation is. God says, that's not your permanent place of residence. And it's time to pull up and it's time to move into the promise of your, cause you're not getting any younger. You're not getting it. Look at somebody say, you're not getting any younger baby I hate to break the news to you but you're gonna need more spanks next year so you're gonna need something to lift it up and hold it up and so you you're gonna need some what's that stuff the men put on their beard and stuff y'all turn out you're great oh don't act like you don't know pastor Michael what is it y'all be putting on there yeah I know it is y'all be dying that gray stuff all black and I know everybody looking at me like they don't yes you are because if it's not turning gray it's it's falling loose it's turning out come on it's coming off so so we aren't getting any younger right life is but a vapor you don't have a whole lifetime to waste you can't just keep going in circles. You can't just keep wandering in the wilderness. People who are wanderers are hooked on surviving. It's time that you get hooked, not on surviving, but on thriving, on the places that God has promised you. You're engineered to succeed. So God here says, you must realize that, that one of the things that, that God does is he will anoint you in trouble. So when he speaks to them in their wasteland where things are breaking down, God is gifted and good at an anointing people who are in trouble see most people will pray their trouble away but trouble is really your friend because trouble is an incubator for greatness it's what pushes you into purpose and that's why the, the apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3 he says don't pray the storm away but pray that you would be strengthened in your inner man that you might know what is the hope and the and what is the height and the length and the breadth of the love of God God he wants you to understand that you would know who you are in Christ so instead of praying the storm away Pray that you would be stronger in that situation. So God begins to prepare them in trouble. Be prepared environments that God places you in. In other words, God will allow you in some difficult situations. Can I break this down because we're family tonight? This is not an easy situation, but you've been prepared for it. I prepared you for the last two and a half years. I've prepared you through the word of God. You are not baby Christians. Without walls is not sitting there spoon fed. You have been well fed in the word of God you know the word of God there's depth in you you understand the bigger picture you get the kingdom of God and so God says times of 
transition and times of trouble and times when things feel like they're, they're, they're changing and things are different. God says, I prepared you for certain environments. You're not like a little baby any longer. You've grown to a full mature. You've grown to a bigger stature. You've been prepared for difficulty. Some of you were cut for it. Come on, you better help me. Don't make me preach this. You were cut for fights. I was born fighting. I was born with an umbilical cord around my neck, born breach. I was born to let the devil know I win and you don't. I was born to let a situation know with God on my side, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Just slap somebody a high five. Say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it because you are called for challenges. Listen without walls. You're not called to be a church of convenience or comfort. You're called for challenges, which means you're a church of restoration. You're a church of empowerment. You're a church of evangelism, which means if you're restoring people, you're going to have some challenging people coming into your life. It means you're going to have some people who have brokenness and you're going to have some people who have some spirits that they're dealing with. And you've got to, if you're going to be a lifeguard, you've got to be able to handle some punches. So you're called for challenges. You're called for difficult assignments. You're not called to sit around and hear a little cute poem and sermon that has three points and a stands at the end where everybody shouts. You're called to look at a problem and be the innovative solution as an agent of change to bring forth the image of God in the earth because you bring reformation. You bring structural alignment. You're called to make a difference. You're part of a remnant. You're not just another church on another corner. You are a world changing history making people that have been called and raised up for such a time as this to bring forth the greatness of God. So stop seeing challenges as your enemies. You've got to begin to see challenges as an instrument of God. So that's why when you see trouble and you see challenge, you shouldn't freak out. You should get excited. The Bible says we rejoice in trouble and it means you brag. You don't have anything to brag about until you've got a tight place, which is what trouble is. Until you've got a narrow place. Until you're in a restricted place, you have no bragging rights. You don't get to brag because you got a new car and a new house. That's not what the Bible says to brag about. You get to brag because you're in a difficult predicament that the only thing that can get you out is the hand of God. You have bragging rights when you're in a situation that says stand back now and see the salvation of the Lord. I've got Pharaoh's army behind me chasing me down and a Red Sea in front of me and there is no way of escape unless I stand back and watch God do the supernatural because the only way this marriage is going to make it, the only way come on, my mind is not going to be lost the only way I'm not going to die and be buried six feet under the only way I'm going to get out of this debt is if God be for me then who can be against me God created you for difficult assignments. I know you wanted to eat, live an easy life, but nothing in your whole life has ever been easy. So why do you think now you're all of a sudden going to get an easy street? God created you to bring change because you are a way maker. You're a person that is an image bearer of God to take challenges and bring forth solutions in the earth. I, I know I'm preaching better than you're shouting right now. I know that I need somebody who has an ear to hear. Do I need to get in and stir some things up right now? Do I need to stir up a gift on the inside of you and call forth the giant of greatness on the inside of you. I know that it can't be that quiet right now. That right now you should be up on your feet not just physically in this place but spiritually in your life that you should be tearing down every demonic principality, every stronghold. I shouldn't come in here and see Pastor Michael wearied. No, I shouldn't. He should be so surrounded because he shouldn't be the only one leading six o'clock prayer. You should be coming after the devil with a vengeance right now and say you will never get another pastor of ours you will never get another parishioner you will never get another marriage you will never there will not be a death there will not be a divorce there will not be debt not in my house because this is the house of God and the enemy cannot have possession of it as he wants to according to Psalm 83 this is the house of God and because it's the house of God we'll take him back the kingdom of God suffered violent and the violent take it by force and the only way you do that is our weapons of 
warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You can't deal with things in the spirit with natural means. You've got to superimpose the will of heaven into earth, which means if you've got to push away a plate, then push away the plate. If it means you got to wake up at 6 a.m. and walk a floor, then you walk a floor. You aren't going to get change until you open your mouth and decree a thing and declare a thing. You can't play God. You can't play church. This isn't a play thing. This isn't toy tricks for kids, baby. Go back to a little playground. If you're going to be a Christian, it's not a playground. It's a battlefield, which means you've got to know how to wear some armor and you've got to know how to do some warfare and you've got to know how to fight for your family and fight for your finances, prophesy to yourself, stir up the gift of God, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and making melodies. You've got to stop talking bad about your husband, bad about your wife, murmuring and complaining, talking about leadership, sitting around like a bunch of little babies. I know that doesn't happen at Without Walls. Doing this, you've got to come in a power of agreement and unity and say, we're about to shake this city because the keys have been given to us. And so you can't defeat us because we're undefeatable because the blood of Jesus is covering us. We're called by God. We're chosen by God. We're anointed by God. We're appointed by God. And because of that, if God be for us, who can be against us? Now slap somebody a high five. Say, now do your job for Jesus. Do it. Now be seated because i got to get you into your prophetic purpose. Now y'all making me work too hard here tonight. So people are activated by problems. See, don't make me talk about weapons that are formed by God. Because everybody thinks that all weapons are from the enemy. But people are activated by problems. Friends bring comfort to you. Enemies bring challenges and rewards to you. Jesus could have never fulfilled the purpose of God without Judas. He could have done it with, he didn't really need John. He didn't even need Peter. He didn't need Andrew. He didn't need Thomas. He didn't need any of them. But he had to have Judas. Because had Judas not been a part of Jesus' inner circle, then he would have never betrayed him. Had he not betrayed him and kissed him with that kiss of betrayal, then he would not have been crucified. Had he not been crucified, he would not have been buried in a borrowed tomb and he would have never resurrected. Had he not resurrected, we wouldn't be sitting here as the family of God. So some of the things that you pray away are the very things that put you in position for your purpose. My God. You're going to look back and you're going to thank God for Judas. See, you're calling Judas an enemy, but Judas is really your best friend. Because Judas put you in line for your purpose. Mm, I'm preaching to somebody right now. So people are activated by problems. A truly anointed person it, it gets activated in a time of trouble. What good is a solution without a problem? So, so when you get in a certain situation, don't expect always to be appreciated just because you're in a problem. Watch. Appreciation is for relationships. Not everybody is going to appreciate you and not everybody's going to like you. This is not about politics. This is not about popularity. This is not by popular opinion. This is about the purpose of God. And so you won't always be appreciated. That's why Moses said to them in Deuteronomy chapter 31, be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid. Now, how many of you believe you've got a land to possess this year? How many of you believe that we are without walls have nations to shake this year? Okay, if we, then, then I'm giving you in this, the instruction how we're going to do it. So he says, be strong and be of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid. For the Lord thy God, it is he that goeth with thee, and he will not fail thee, and he'll not forsake thee. And Moses called to Joshua and said unto them in the sight of Israel, be strong and be of good courage. For thou must go with the people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them. And the Lord, it is he that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, and he'll not fail thee. Neither forsake thee, neither uh, fear not, neither be dismayed. So in, in the ver first verse, he says, he says here, he says, do not, he says, fear not, nor be afraid. The word do not be afraid literally means do not give your enemy reverence and do not give your enemy respect. It means don't even, don't even give your enemy the time of day. Give your enemy no reverence and give your enemy no respect. Don't even talk about your enemy. Talk about your God. So if everybody's against you, it says don't, they were outnumbered always. The children of Israel were always outnumbered. But he's saying don't be afraid. Don't reverence your enemy and don't give your enemy respect. 
Why are you giving the enemy more reverence and respect than what you're giving God? And then he says, do not be dismayed. Do not break down and do not allow confusion or fear to break you down. He says, but you stand strong, stand in a place of courage. So you must see opportunity to change the atmosphere without complaining about problems. Because you already know complainers remain, right? But praisers get raised. So if you start complaining about the situation, then you're going to provoke God in the day of wilderness and you're going to draw back unto perdition so God says draw nigh unto me by faith and here's here's why this is so important because you've entered into a sovereign setup season it's 2012 somebody say it's 2012 and I'm almost through 2012 is a multiple that has to do with rule 12 is the number which means we are returning to rule it's a number of perfection or a number of government it has to do with ruling and so it has to do with reigning it means everything's coming into divine alignment so the season of struggle is over and God says you are returning to rulership or you're returning to a place of dominion now let me explain to you dominion because God's original intention is his final decision Genesis chapter 1 verse 12 26 right through 28 it says God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion somebody say dominion look at your neighbor say dominion Dominion literally means to tread down, to subjugate, to crumble off, to prevail, to come against a bear, to make rule over, to take. So it, it means God is saying, let us tread down. So in 2012, God's saying, you're going to tread down some things. You're going to have dominion. You're going to subjugate some things. Things that have loomed over you, you're about to tread them down. You're about to have rulership over them. You're about to be a ruler. A ruler is a commander with a front position. It means that you're about to have a supernatural transportation that God's going to take from whatever in your life has been on the backside, and he's about to put you up front. Now, when God transports you, nobody can move you out of place. What God raises up, if God pulls you up out of a pit and puts you in a palace, it doesn't matter who's for you or who's against you. The Bible says he'll lift you up out of the dunghill, and he'll set you before the princes, even the princes of his people. It doesn't matter who wants you to stand before a prince or not. If God pulls you up, because it's God that lifts one up, and it's God that sets another one down. Promotion doesn't come from the south, the east, the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. It's the hand of God. And when God's hand puts you in a position, no man can take you out of that place. That's why it says, in him I live, I move, and I have my being. In other words, if you interpret that to its original etymology, it means God put me in this thing, so man can't take me out of this thing. I'm the only one that can walk away from my destiny and so when you have dominion you have the ability to tread down you have the ability to subjugate you have the ability there's some things that have been looming over you but I want to get in you that 2012 is a divine moment that if you miss the Cairo season that has been set up sovereignly by God things that have been over you are going to remain to rule but God says I set you in a time that it is now that you tread down I've given you authority but you can't seize a God moment if you can't discern a God moment so you got to subjugate it so you are no longer under the rulership of depression you're no longer under the rulership of Pharaoh the hard taskmaster you're no longer under the rulership of debt and poverty but Pastor Paula you don't know my bank account I don't care about your bank account because I know God and I know his word and I know his ability to change everything around in your life I know the prophetic utterance I know revelation ministry I know if God says what thus saith the Lord it will come to pass and if God said a two-headed camel is going to walk through that door then I'm getting ready to see a two-headed camel walk through that door because D if God said it it has already been said on all I have to do is superimpose it through the power of prayer through the power of pushing it through through intercession through the power of using spiritual weapons to bring to pass thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth that there is a forced compliance with what God has already decreed and God has decreed this this is the year of dominion. God has decreed this is the year you tread down. God has decreed this is the year you stop moping around, feeling sorry, acting like a victim, living beneath your privileges, acting like a step redhead child. Come on, sitting there, don't even know who you are, adopted by somebody that doesn't even like you. You are royalty. You're an ambassador. You're an heir with God. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Let me break it on down. You are bad to the bone. There is 
nothing that can defeat you. You are undefeatable because Christ in you ever lived to make intercession through you. There is a greater power in you than anything that would ever be against you. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead now dwells, which means it habitates and it lives and it lodges and it resides on the inside of you. God is not out there. God's in here. So watch out, baby, because I'm tapping into a power and a source that is so creative that it can change everything. It can change a credit report easily. It can change a bad situation easily. It can change and stop the winds and calm the sea and stop a devil and pull down a principality. But I've got to get in divine alignment and come into my purpose and position. And in the name of Jesus, nothing's going to distract me. Nothing's going to pull me out of position. This is my year to subjugate. This is my year to tread down. This is not my year of struggle. This is not my year of defeat. This is not my year of depression. This is not my year of poverty. This is not my year of death. This is not my year of disease. This is not my year of sitting back. This is not my year of settling. This is not my year of living little. This is not my year of living in a place I don't belong. This is my year I take full dominion. This is the year that people are going to stand back and say, look what the Lord has done. My God, he really is Lord. You better look at somebody, say, it's my time for dominion. It's my time. But just in case, y'all better be seated, just in case you don't know what dominion and rule means, let me keep breaking it down. When you rule, it means you have governing power or it's possession to use authority. It means you now have governing power. You have governing power or it's possession to use authority. So God's given you power that governs, my God. It means you exercise control, dominion, or direction over. This is not the year where things exercise control over you. You exercise control over them. Martin, you better get in your prophetic position. You exercise control. You exercise. Y'all think I don't see. I see everything. You exercise dominion. You exercise direction. You govern. To be in total control or command. To exercise supreme authority. Total control or command. You aren't waking up and your day is dictating you. You're dictating your day. Pastor Michael, you got about half of them. The rest of them got to get up and get to that place that they go, okay, I believe it, even if I don't feel it. I'm going into my promised land, even if it's by the way of Mount Seir, even if it's a way that my flesh is fighting it and fear is coming against me, I'm still going to take my place of possession because God's word said it, so I'm just going to believe it. I'm going to step out. I'm getting out of this boat, and I'm believing this is my season of sovereign divine reversal and interruption. Somebody slap your neighbor, say, excuse me, but I'm going somewhere this year. I'm going somewhere. So now Moses is pleading with them, and, he's, and he, he's bringing them reproof and correction. He's pleading with them. And he's saying, don't have a repeat performance. Now, I'm talking to you without walls. God's given you a moment. He's given you an opportunity. And he's telling you, don't have a repeat performance. Don't draw back, but draw nigh. Forty years later, they stand at a threshold of a divine moment and opportunity to enter in and take possession. And God declares in verse 7, break camp in advance. Break camp. In. One of the versions says, take journey. Turn you and take your journey. Turn in the Hebrew literally means this, to face or to peer, to look. That's why this is so important. Are you ready? You've got to turn and you've got to face and you've got to appear to your future. You've got to do a Luke 9, 62 right now. Put your hand to the plow because no man looking back is even fit for the kingdom of God. And that mean, word fit means qualified for the royalty, the rule, and the realm of God. So you've got to face and appear, which means you've got to let go of the memories that would hold you to your past. You've got to let go of regrets. You've got to let go of shame. You've got to let go of guilt. You've got to let go of anything in your past. You've got to let go of garlic, leeks, and onions. <laughs> You do, because some people are sitting there because in the, in the 11 day process, you can't taste the promise of possession yet. And because you can't taste it, you're in the hallway of two doorways. 
and the hallway between two doorways is where you have been and where you're going. And that's a difficult place because it's called a place of transition. In the Greek, it's the metathesis. And what that is, it means an uprooting of one thing for laying down of another way thing. So when you stand in a hallway between a place called somewhere and a place called nowhere, then you've been somewhere or you've been nowhere and you're going somewhere, but you aren't even sure what that somewhere looks like. And so in that hallway, it can be a time of darkness before you get into your full deliverance. I don't know who I'm here for. And God says, you've got to turn and you've got to face it. That's why vision's so powerful because without a vision, my people will perish. That's why you've got to see it. You've got to see your promise. You've got to see that this city belongs to without walls. You've got to see the giant on the inside of you you've got to see it and, and you've got to appear you've got to face forward you can't look back that's the problem as long as you keep look, look what's happening watch look if you're doing this looking in the rear view mirror and you, you're looking behind you right and you're trying to look ahead of you no one can look in a rear view mirror and see in the front view front front window at the same time you can't look back and look forward because if you're doing this like this like this like this like this like this a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways do you know what that means unstable it means you're varying you're wavering and so when you're double-minded you are going to waver in how many ways guys oh that's right so you're unstable in one area but it's affecting every area and so you're you're wavering so did I make the right decision should I have done this do I do that do I not do that should I go there? Should I marry them? Should I not have married them? Should I stay? Should I leave? Should I move? Should I work? Where do I go? Am I planted? Is this right? Is this wrong? Stop all that. Because you're varying in every planted appear face forward i'm planted this is the address god has given me this is what god has called me to do i put my hand to the plow and i don't look back i don't look back i don't look back look at somebody say you're not looking back now i've got to work this for just a minute i was going to take them all the way into the promise and give them everything but i've got to deal with some things because somebody's looking back and it's causing you grief in your heart somebody's looking back and it's causing you emotional turmoil somebody's looking back and you keep thinking you think you you're looking back to 1984 blue lagoon and endless love baby you are not brooke shields and he is not christopher i don't know what his name was but those days are over Put the prom uh, queen tiara away. Honey, you're 50 years old. Everything's sagging right now. It ain't looking. Let it go. Let it go. You're just thinking, well, if I was just with him. If you saw a picture of him on Facebook right now, you're going to be glad you weren't with him. <laughs> You, you got, you got an imagination right now happening and you keep looking back. Stop looking back. So you keep at would have, could have, should have, all the different things. What I do, right? What? Stop. Somebody just turn to your neighbor, say, stop, stop, because this is your year to have dominion. And if you look back at Egypt, look at Lot's wife. When she looked back, she became monumentalized. She became a pillar of salt. Now, don't make me work that word looking back. You know what she did? She didn't just glance back like a reflection. It means when she looked back, she had a longing, a desirous emotion from where she had come from. It's over. You can't get yesterday back. Yesterday's into the tomb. Today's in the womb. And what I'm pregnant with right now is what I'm going to birth in my future. I don't care if it was good. I don't care if it was bad. It's still yesterday. You've got to stop looking back and you've got to have a forward face. You've got to peer forward. This is what I'm feeling for this right now. I can't go any further. You've got to look ahead. Somebody say, I'm looking ahead. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see your purpose? Can you see your destiny? Can you see your prophetic promise? Can you see what God has declared to you? Can you be confident in this one thing that the same God that started the good work is the same God that will finish it further and execute it? Because if I can't do that, I'm going to be 
stuck in a place and I'm going to die in the wilderness, but the devil is a liar. I'm not going to die as a wandering. I'm going to take possession of the promise. So anything that is holding you back, God says, face it. Go up here in your future. Look at your promise. Then he says, take journey and break camp. The, the word break camp, and I'm almost through, means to pull up the tent pegs. So anything that is holding you back, God says, pull up the tent pegs. Now, literally, you've got to unloose some things. You've got to untie some things. Tent pegs are what anchor you to stuff. And God says, you've got to let go of some things that are anchoring you to what you don't belong a part of anymore. And you've got to pull up the tent pegs and be willing to go into the place that I am sending you now. You can't keep singing the same songs that you sang 10 years ago. You can't keep saying the same prayer that you prayed 10 days ago. You can't keep singing and doing the same thing the way you did it then. It's a new day and God said you got to pull up the tent pegs. Oh, I'm going to really preach it because you're going to have to help some people. Well, Pastor Paula, we just wanted you here on every Sunday. Well, you it, it can't be the same because God's not the same because none of us is not the same. We've got to all be in the will and maybe God's doing a work in your life for just a minute here to see who you really made Lord because he is Lord. He is Savior. He is the superstar. I told you that from the very beginning. So you've got to pull up the tent pegs. Somebody say, I'm pulling up the tent pegs. This house is so well covered, you have no idea how well covered this house is. You are a blessed people. Look at somebody say, we are blessed. Slap somebody a high five. Say, you're sitting next to blessing. You're sitting next to blessing. So you have to uproot some things and you've got to relocate. What do you have to uproot? You've got to uproot an attitude. You've got to uproot a heart. You've got to uproot some of your associations. You've got to pull up tent pegs. You've got to break camp, which means to separate with a suddenness. When you start breaking, it means to have a severance with a suddenness, to turn some things over. So when you start uprooting, when you start breaking camp, you start pulling up pegs. You've got to get the gift of goodbye. Say goodbye goodbye to everybody that is fatal to your faith. Say goodbye to everything, whether it was success or failure. You've got to say goodbye to 2009. You've got to say goodbye to what broke your heart. You've got to say goodbye to what made your heart happy. Come on, you've got to say goodbye to everything in the past. You've got to get the gift of goodbye. Somebody needs to have a wake. Somebody needs to have some flowers, a funeral, a burial service. You've got to bury that thing deeper than six feet under. You've got to have an incineration you need to go ahead and cremate that sucker you need to make sure there's nothing left not even ashes come on you need to get rid of the whole thing you gotta kiss that sucker goodbye say it's over it's in my past but I'm ready for my future I'm getting ready to move to a place that I've never been before I'm not gonna stay stagnant any longer but I'm getting ready to rise up my business is coming forth my marriage is gonna be better than it's ever been before my family's gonna be restored my kids are going to be saved and prophesying and speaking in tongues. My family is about to do amazing things. I'm going to relocate. I'm going to see God be God in a big way because something is about to suddenly break forth. And when it starts to break, it separates into parts. And when I break forth, then I start to break out. And you already know what break out is in conclusion. It means to open up to your future and to send into time and to place. You already know when you have a breakout. Shane was preaching on something with breaking and I said when you break it means a sudden advancement and when you break out it's like getting chicken pox all over you it means it covers your entire body because when you start breaking forth then it's going to cover the whole body without walls this city is dependent on your obedience to God I'm declaring to you right now it's contagious when you start breaking out it gets on people around you it gets contagious you're going to be contagious in 2000 and 12. There's an anointing. There's fresh oil coming on you. There's fresh fire coming on you. You're going to break forth and you're going to break out. And with that breakout, it means you're going to have a sudden advancement in time and place and position. When you advance, it means you make progress. It means that you have a quantum leap. It means that you move forward in a socioeconomic realm. It means that you accelerate the progress.
progress and you shift some things. You're getting ready for an advancement. It means you're getting ready to have an acceleration. Things that would have taken you 20 years are going to happen in 20 days because God is going to supernaturally transport you. And I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, cut off the past. Forget your losses. I know you were in Egypt a long time. I know it affected your mind. I know it affected your body. I know it affected the way you see things, your perception. But I came to prophesy to you that it's a new day. And God is telling you, you've entered into a sovereign season. And he's getting ready to take you into the preordained works of God by the promises of God. And he's saying, you've dwelt there long enough. Now get up, break camp, and go take possession. And to possess means that you're about to occupy. And you're about to go. Now when you start to go, when you start stepping out, I know the enemy is going to come against you with everything he can. Because he doesn't want you to move forward. Because his biggest fear is that this ministry would ever fulfill its purpose. Because God started this ministry with a handful of people. And he declared that we would see nations shaken. He said that people would fly in. And that they would be healed. That it would be a center of healing. And that there would be all that would go forth. And that every tribe and every tongue and every nation and every ethnicity would flow out of this house. And that nations would be healed. And that God would raise it up as an apostolic center. As a military strategic base. That it would literally be, literally be like a sitcom to the nations. That it would be a command center. That we would see the apostolic. We would see the prophetic. We would see the evangelist. We would see the teacher. We would see the pastor. That's why you got to get ready for change. It's not in the way of the tradition of your mindset. I know it's messing you up. I know it is. But I'm moving in an apostolic office. Pastor Michael's moving in a pastoral. Shane's moving in evangelistic pastoral. There's prophetic. Come on. And you know you just had a true prophet here on Wednesday. You already understand the teachers are coming forth. You start getting the five-fold ministry gifting flowing in this house. Then the saints come into the perfection, which is the fullness of Christ according to Ephesians chapter 4, which means when we come to the fullness, we are all in oneness of the assurance and the belief of Christ. We come to a place of full maturity, which means we consummate the character of Christ. And we don't have to sit here with hopeful wishing thinking. We don't have to beg. All we have to do is start superimposing, walking in who we are and who you are is a child of the most high God that you bring forth the kingdom of God that is within you and you exercise the dominion and you bring forth the royalty and the rule and you start seeing it come forth because without walls God says your days of being babes in the wilderness is over I have called you to a place of fullness I have called you to a place of maturity I have called you to a place for nations to be shaken and now is your time you have been well taught in the word you have been fed with green pastures you know the word of the Lord you know the will of God and God is saying now rise up to the full stature of who you are in Christ and take nations stop looking at what you don't have stop looking at somebody to come authorize you and somebody to come empower you you've been authorized you've been empowered you know what to do you know who you are stop trying to kid yourself and act like you don't know who you are this church and this house knows it's spiritual identity you know how bad you are in Christ you know it doesn't matter what you came out of you know that you are a blood bought weapon in the hands of God for mass destruction to go to this generation and to bring forth true change and revolution you know that you will tear down the walls of religion and you will bring people into relationship you will bring forth spiritual truths to transform lives you will bring forth light and darkness because you've been called to work the night shift and God has set you up for such a time as this and it's not going to be a superstar it's not going to be a personality driven ministry it's going to be the church of the living God it's going to be the church of Jesus Christ and upon this rock Jesus Christ I have founded my church and this house shall bring forth rivers of living water and out of this place will flow mighty mighty moves of God for God is established it God has ordained it God has called it and I call you forth right now to war in the spirit realm 
and to pull down the principality that has tried to stop the move of God here for the last eight years. The devil is a liar and what gave it legal entry? God told me to come back and tear down every altar and tear down every idol and break everything that was not established by the foundation of God and to restore the foundation and God said get everything that was not put in me let it be shaken so I call forth the shaken every hidden motive every hidden agenda everything that is not of God let it be shaken let the fire of God purge it let it burn to the ground let judgment come on it in the name of Jesus anything not of God God let it stand I stand in my rightful office and right now I decree and I declare that every spirit of manipulation control and Jezebel will be exposed in the name of Jesus and every principality will come down over this region we take authority and divine authority over and we issue an arrest against it right now I speak to the greatness of who you are I call you out of depression right now I call you out of confusion your mind knows better your mind is the mind of Christ you have the mind of the Messiah you do hold the thoughts and the feelings of the Messiah your mind has been washed in the word of God it has been renewed and it has been renovated I break old thinking right now I break old patterns right now I take authority over it I come against everything that would come to you consciously or unconsciously to pull you out of your purpose we lay aside every weight that would so easily beset us we repent of sin get the sin out a little leaven will 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 ruin the whole batch Get it out in the name of Jesus. Come into divine alignment. This is not time to play. This is time for battle. This is time you put on your fatigues. This is time you go to war. This is time you take your family back. This is time you take your mind back. This is time you take your prosperity back. This is the time that you raise up for who you really are. I call you into position. I come as a general right now in the name of Jesus. And I call forth every commander. I call forth every captain. I call forth every admiral. I call forth every colonel. I call forth the intercessors. I call forth the prophets. I call forth the teachers. I call forth the gift of God on the inside of you to stand in alignment. You are anointed. You're appointed. You've been chosen by God. You are the elect of God. You are a royal priesthood and a chosen generation. You've been bought by the blood of God and in the name of Jesus, stand, stand, stand. Having done all to stand, stand. That doesn't mean I'm standing. It means once you won one battle, get ready for another one. Cause here we come. We're taking our schools back. We're taking our kids back. We're taking our finances back. We're taking back every soul. We're taking back the power of God. We're taking back the presence of God. Who took the house of God for their possession? God, let it come to naught. Every enemy that tried to occupy your house, let them be driven out in the name of Jesus. Somebody better say yes. You better start prophesying. Open your mouth right now and prophesy. I feel like warring right now. I hear a sound. I hear a sound in this house. I hear a thunder sound in this house. I hear a sound to prophesy right now. I hear a sound to open up heavens right now. I hear a sound to move mountains right now. I hear a sound to establish in the name of Jesus. Speak, Lord, speak. For with clarity, God will begin to call things forth. And even now, God is opening doors that have been shut in the past. And he gives you a key even to the kingdom. And that key shall come forth. And God is accessing you without walls to places that you have not been before. For I am calling you to high places. And I'm sending in giftings and anointings to bring you to a place that you sit in a heavenly place. And you see with the eyes of the spirit. And you speak with the tongue of the learned. For the Lord has called you. And your tongue shall be as the pen of a ready writer. And you will decree what thus saith the Lord. Says the spirit of God. Prophesy. Speak to the bones. Prophesy. What do you see Ezekiel? Speak to the bones. What do you see in the valley of dead bones? Call them forth in the name of Jesus. Get up here and prophesy Shane. Yes Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands while they're playing. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. This is the season of transition, but it's also the season of blessing. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, not individual prophecy tonight, but mass prophecy. I hear the Lord saying that he's getting ready to take this church. No, he is taking this church this season to the next dimension. But when he raises us to the next dimension, it's for influence within the geographic area of the city. This is the season not only to take the city back, but to have an impact on the world. But the first thing that has to happen is every contrary spirit in the house that's fighting against the mission of this church has to cease now from the top all the way down to the bottom. Every demonic force, every demonic power must cease right now. I want everybody in here to take authority right now. From the top to the bottom, we take dominion, we take authority in the name of Jesus. Now God, as you release this house, he's releasing your house. As he releases this church, he's releasing your house. He's releasing your children. He's releasing your finances. Lift up your hands and shout, release, 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 release. Listen, lift your hands, lift your hands. I hear the Lord saying a complete, as pastor said, turn around. Watch this. God doesn't want to just see the church transition, but he wants to see you transition. He doesn't want to see just the church go to the next level. He wants to see you as an individual. I believe that this is the greatest season for Without Walls because in the midst of looking as if the transition was going to take you out, God said the transition is going to take you up. That your ability to be mature enough to handle the change is going to cause you to move to the next level. You don't have to prophesy to anybody else, but prophesy to yourself and say the transition's not taking me out, but it's taking me up. I'm going higher through this problem. I'm going higher through this change. It's the catalyst to the next level. I wish you'd open up your mouth and shout higher. Shout higher. Shout higher. Come on. Come on higher. 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 My finances are going higher. My spirit's going higher. My mind's going higher. My ministry's going higher. Higher means a place of elevation. It means a place that I haven't been. It's from an ascended place. An ascended place means to step forward and to step up. God says, I'm calling you to step forward. I'm calling you to step up. There's an ascended place that I'm seating you even tonight. It's a heavenly place. It's a place of God's perspective. Higher, higher. Prophesy higher, 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 higher.
you're in a prophetic moment. I didn't come to pastor tonight. I came as an apostle, as a prophet to the nations, to speak to you, to speak to your family, to call it to the higher place. I'm commanding everything that would bind you, that would hold you back, that would hinder you to be loosed off you. Come prophesy, prophesy higher. I hear the Lord say it, go higher. Who wants to go higher? Who wants to go higher? Higher above depression. Higher above sickness. Higher above disease. Higher above slander. Higher above reproach. Higher above debt. Higher above everything that wants to stop this next level. Who wants to go higher? I don't know about you, but I'm made up in my mind. The same, it'll never be the same. It'll never be the same. It'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, higher, higher. there will be no residue of reproach among you for God tonight is removing the residue of reproach he's removing he told Israel he said when you go into the place of promise there'll be no reproach I'll remove the reproach in other words there'll be nothing that resembles from where you came from there'll be nothing that looks like it there'll be nothing on you that even resembles where you came out of God says your attitude won't look like it your mind won't look like it. Your body won't look like it. Your relationship won't look like it. Your credit won't look like it. Your employment won't look like it. Your job won't look like it. God says, I'm shifting it tonight. So he says he's just shifting. I hear it in the spirit. He's superimposed some things. And tonight God put you on a high place. He's plateauing you to a new level, a higher place. And that place that God has taken you tonight, there will be no shame. There will be no reproach. But here's what the Lord says. Now, Pastor Michael, this word's for you. You have to cause them to fight for it. You have to cause them to fight for it. Because just because a prophetic word has come forth, people think that it will happen. But God says whenever prophecy comes forth, it's for confirmation. So this is what God has done. And now God says, you've got to press it through. When Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain, I wish I wanted a dress right now. But when he heard it, he went up to the high place and he got himself in a position. And that position was like this, but with his legs open. I can't do it because I'm in a skirt. It's called a birthing position. It's an oriental position because he got ready. And any woman that's ever had a baby knows that they put your legs up in a certain way. But if you really want to push a baby out fast, you get in a squatting position. And you get ready because you're getting ready to birth. And you're getting ready to push something forth. So when Elijah heard the sound of abundance of rain, he went to a high place and he got in a squatting position. It's called a birthing position. And he started pushing and pushing as you start praying and you start praising until something happens. And if I had on my jeans right now, I would be down in a position saying, push baby, push, push. Cause you're right there. You're right on the verge. It's not the same ministry it was five years ago. It's not the same ministry it was three years ago. It's not even the same ministry it was three months ago. You're in a birthing place. And God says if you'll not be weary in this season and you'll push it forth, you will birth the greatness that this ministry has been ordained, that your family, and when I say ministry, I don't just mean corporately. I mean what you carry individually. You've got greatness locked up on the inside of you. It's time to push. Look at somebody say, I'm birthing. I'm birthing. Say, excuse me, but I'm going to get messy if I have to. I'm going to get, I'm going to get crazy if I have to. Excuse me, I might scream. I might do some crazy things, but I've got to give birth to this because I cannot have another miscarriage. I cannot miscarry what I have been called to do. I can't waste another decade. I can't waste another week. I can't waste another relationship. I've got to push some things out. I've got to 
burst some promises that God has said, which means you gotta wake yourself up and start praying. You gotta start prophesying. You gotta start pushing. I declare it, I decree it, and God says if you will break camp and pull up some tent pegs and you will accelerate, then you will take possession without walls. Come on and praise Him. on you D that's very prophetic I want you to break off in th about threes right now and I want you to push right now because the women understand this too when you get ready to have a baby you have a midwife you have a coach and you get ready I just helped a lady give birth a and when you get ready she's passing out between contractions you say come on baby you can do it you can do it you can do it come on push one more time push come on breathe hard push and you have somebody there helping you. The Bible says if any two of you, see you gotta find somebody right now. If you gotta find them on the other side of the church, you need to find somebody like you right now. You need to ask them, are you sure you believe like I believe? Do you believe this is my sovereign season? Do you believe this is my set time? Do you believe this is my year of returning to ruling? Do you believe this is my time I come back up front? Everything that's been pushed to the back is coming up front. Do you believe every principality and stronghold is coming down? Because if you do, you better grab my hand because I need a midwife to push. Now get in threes right now. As they prophesy, you start praying over each other. Come on, come on, come on, pray. of abundance of rain he said to his servant what do you see I have to ask you right now what do you see because if you can't see it I've got to send you back until you can see it because he said back he said I don't see anything he said go back and look again I don't see anything go back and look again 
I don't see anything. Go back and look again. Because Shane, people can't walk with you who can't see what you can see. And until they can see what you can see, you gotta keep sending them back. Go back and look again. On the seventh time D, he said, I see a, a, a little cloud, but it's just the size of a man's hand. He said, you can see it now. Because if you can see just a small bit of what's getting ready to break forth, he said, you better get ready because you're going to have to outrun. And you already know the story. They had to outrun some chariots because there was a sound of abundance of rain. And I came to prophesy to you that what looks like a little is going to be a whole lot. Do not despise small beginnings because what looks like a little is going to be a whole lot. You better get ready because there are going to be buildings all over this city that are owned by this ministry. You better get ready because I see what the enemy is going to come in. I've got to be careful what I say right now, but he's going to come in. I saw it in the spirit and what looks like one thing. He's going to look like he's going to try to scatter. He's going to look like he's going to try to do one thing. But God says every time he goes to touch it, I'm going to build it. Every time he goes to touch it, I'm going to build it. So every time the enemy's hand goes to touch it, God says it's just going to, it's going to explode. It's going to build. I saw it. And I'll share it with my executive staff, what I just saw in the spirit. Because every time the enemy's hand goes to touch it, it's going to cause an explosion. The more they persecuted them and afflicted them, the more they multiplied. I'm going to tell you one thing. The devil's going to hate the day he ever messed with you. He's going to regret it. He's going to regret it. He's going to regret it. Because it's payday. It's time for governance. Now, I want everybody to get a seed that is large. I want you to get a $212 seed if you can that says in 2012 is my year for birthing forth the blessing and divine reign and divine rulership. If you don't have that, get as close to it as you can and you run it down to this altar. Run it down to this altar. Bring me my blue checkbook, baby. Run it down to this altar. Run it down to this altar. Run it down, run it down, run it down, run it down. Run it down to this altar. Keep prophesying, D. Make your checks pay without without walls.
God said to do everyone that's got a sentence of death on your life. You've got an incurable disease. You've got an incurable disease. Cancer, AIDS, incurable, death, death sentence. There's something that the enemy says, you, the, you, this is your expiration. The doctors have said two years, five years, five months. I don't care what it is. Get down here. God's about to heal you tonight. Get down here. Get down here quickly. Get down here. You've got a disease. Come on down. Come on down, mama. You got a disease. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. It's being broken on you. Start praying in the spirit. Start praying. Because God says, when I lay hands on these, it's broken over them. And everything, come on, God's going to heal tonight. God's going to heal tonight. God's going to heal tonight. Start praying in the spirit. Start praying in the spirit. When I lay hands on you, you're going to be healed tonight. There's healing that's getting ready to flow out. The fire of God's going to touch your body. And when that happens, everything that the enemy has sent to death into your life is going to be dismantled and dissipate in the name of Jesus. Bring them on down. Bring them on down. Bring them on down. Bring them on down. Bring them on. Pray in the spirit, church. Bring them on down. Bring them on down. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. It's an incurable disease. It's an incurable disease. Okay, but God's about to heal you. And you're going to go back to the doctor. And I'm telling you, within 30 days, you're going to come back with the report of the Lord. And you're going to be totally healed. Totally healed. Within 30 days, start praying in the Spirit. Start praying in the Spirit. Because I'm telling you, whatever it is that the enemy has come, I saw it in the realm of the Spirit. It was like, like a chokehold. And, and, and God told me to call forth those that had it in their physical body and there would be healing manifest and it will be a testimony to this church and a sign to you that that which has been a chokehold to strangle you. And I saw it. It was like a grip. It was a death grip. And what has been as a death grip to your life is broken off of you. And Brad, there's healing. You had no idea, but Archbishop turned around to me and he said, miracles and healing are about to flow through your hands. Well, you were in intercession and said, you came to me, you said, Mom, healing's about to flow through your life. Now, that's not, I mean, that's just, I, I'm a prophetic person that I prophesy, I teach, revelation. But God told me tonight, and I saw it very clearly, that there's going to be miracles, and within 30 days, the doctor's report is going to be reversed. But the minute I lay hands on you, whatever has been a chokehold over you, whether it's a death grip over your finances, I saw like a death grip trying to strangle you in the spirit, but it's broke in the name of Jesus. Whether it's emotional, whether it's a relational, whether it's financial, it's broke in the name of Jesus. Okay, get down here quickly because I'm through. Five is the number of grace. This is it right here. Brad, if you'll come hold this microphone. Pastor Michael, come stand with me. Shane, come stand with me. Y'all come stand with me. Start praying in the spirit. The moment I lay hands. Start praying in the spirit. Now, when I say pray in the spirit, that means open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Start praying in the spirit like this is your life in the name of Jesus. Manny, God's getting ready to do something great for you. I'm burned out. I'm burned out. I'm burned out. I'm this God's going to use this because God has divinely reversed your life you have a great testimony and even those things that you have pushed to the side and that have been in hidden and darkness God says you will bring them forth because you will stand and they'll say who is this man just like the man Peter that stood up on the day of Pentecost they'll go who is this man and when they said what meaning that they said it because they couldn't believe what God had done and, and I don't know you in the natural but I know in the spirit there's a great call of God yes. you were marked even as a young boy you were marked and he burns it out now Woo! It's a testimony for your call it's over. okay there's a root in you of fear of great fear and the enemy keeps trying to torment you there's such fear 
you're waking up and you're having anxiety and even panic attacks but you'll never have another panic attack it's over okay you're not gonna have any more panic attacks it's over it's over amen you've been having great anxiety panic attacks but no more it's over the minute I lay hands on you God says not only is he gonna heal you but that thing which is a tormenting spirit to bring in you're not gonna die like your mother you're not gonna die in that situation you're not gonna have that disease okay it's a it's a it's a curse from it comes from the female line of your family it comes from the female line of your family but it's broken right now and that root of fear is being uprooted out of you. It's being pulled out of you and it's being burned out of you right now by the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. Right? In the name of Jesus. It's being uprooted right now. And even from the last two generations, it will not visit you. It will not visit your children. It will not visit future generations. And by the way, you will have... It's over, baby. It's over. It's it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Come on and start praying. Come on, start clapping your hands. Start praying in the spirit. Start praying in the spirit. Come on, it's over. There's some things being uprooted in your life. Pray in the spirit. Deal with the brat. Pray in the spirit. Work with them, Shane. Pray in the spirit. Deal with it. I know, deal with it. You've got it. You've got it. It's a deceptive spirit from when he was a child. It's a deceptive spirit from when he was a child. Come on, I'm raising you guys up. I'm calling the prophet out of you. I can do it, but it's in you too. Pray in the spirit. Corinne, get up here and start praying. Pray in the spirit. Come on. It's a matter of life or death for this young man. It was a spirit of deception that came when he was even about five years old. It's been wrapped around him, but it's being broken right now in the name of Jesus. We break that spirit. We break it. Every deceptive spirit, that spirit of serpent. That serpent spirit is broken right now. That man will not be strangulated. He will not die in the name of Jesus. I loose you. I loose you by the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. Brad, take authority over it right now. We break it. We break it at the head of it. We break it. We break it. It's like a boa. It's like a boa constrictor, but it's broken right now in the name of Jesus. You have no authority over this young man. You have no power over him. But right now, he is free. 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 And the blood sacrifice that was put over his life is broken by the blood of Jesus. It's broken by the blood of Jesus. You're loose right now in the name of Jesus. Corinthians are praying in the spirit like you know how to. Come on, that's it. Come on, blah, 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 blah. There it is. There it is. Get it. Get it. Get it. Tanya, come up here. The Lord says even from when you were 17 years old, you waited for your moment. You waited for your moment for a long time. And what the Lord showed you when you were 17 years old, you keep saying, when God, but 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 when God. And the Lord says you will no longer ask when, for God will give to you quickly. What would have taken a long time. And even now, the wind of God blows on you, blows on you now, now, now. 
now. In Jesus' name. And it shall not come back tonight. You are sealed. It will not come back and it will not revisit you, Tanya. It will not. I break the cycle right now in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, God blows away every strange fire from your life. Every strange fire. Every strange spirit. It is broken by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, you are free right now. I decree it, I declare it. Give it a vocal sound. Come on, come on. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. There's freedom in this house. There's freedom. If you want to be free, you can be free right now. There's freedom. Just receive your liberty in the name of Jesus. Just receive it. I hear chains falling off. I hear massive chains falling off. There's freedom. There's freedom for every person that desires it. I hear massive chains falling off in the name of Jesus. That thing's been loosed. It's loosed. What had tried to strangle you and choke hold you, it was like a death grip. The Lord says it's loose. Now you got to keep it off. you got to keep it off by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, in the name of Jesus. Is Noah here tonight? Noah, come here. I need you to get five men this week to fast for this young man. And at the end of five days, it'll be completed in his life. Okay, I need you to get five strong men because you're not dealing with, come on up, you're not dealing with an ordinary. I'll tell you what it is in the spirit. 